Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm delighted to be joined by Paul Hello. Moneypenny, um, who most people will know from BBC's Interior Design Masters, but is actually been a retailer for quite some time. So we had a little chat at Autumn Fair. Um, when we came off stage, a lot of the questions that we were talking about was actually people were curious about how he puts his store together, how he works with colour, what are the practical things that people can take away from. So what we thought we'd do is something super visual um, and talk you through some of the practical processes and some of the inspirations that hopefully you can take back to your own stores. Um, so, Paul, welcome. Thank you for having me, yeah. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, you are indeed a retailer. So, can you tell me a little bit about your, um, I suppose, move from retail into TV? Yeah, so my, back, my background was always retail. Um, so, I've worked for the same company in Northern Ireland now for 10 years. Um, we're the biggest stockist of wall covered, I think, in Europe. Um, so we have a massive amount of stock um, of wallpaper. We have branched into soft furnishings, cushions, accessories. Um, and the first time I actually came here was as the buyer for the store about four years ago. Um, so I came here as a buyer, and now I'm here now um, launching my own cushions. Um, so yes, it wasn't all about Instagram <laughs> and TV. My passion is retail. It's speaking to customers. It's speaking to other retailers, um, visual merchandise, window display, customer journey. So that's that's the passion. Yeah, and you can tell that. I think even um, this morning you've been obviously quite busy. So Paul also has his own wonderful range, um, which you can see at the Millini stand. But we've been talking um, just before we came on stage about some of the questions that retailers have been speaking to you about today and it is actually all about how do we bring this into our store so it pops yeah I think it's, it's, it's scary as well that when you walk in you can be so overwhelmed when I walk around as a buyer I think I want it all I want to buy it all but it's that risk yeah. so it's about being prepared um, knowing your customer um, and knowing what you what what space you have and what you can bring into the store yeah. Uh, but yeah I get asked all the time um, what do you think I should what do you think I should buy in but well, I don't know that you you know the cost you know that you know the customer more than I do but um, it's certainly really overwhelming when you come here yeah and I, hopefully there's a few retailers who that will resonate with I think you can't ever ask anybody else's advice on what you should be buying for your store you know your customers best and you know your own style as well um, and talking of style I think that's something that Mr. Moneypenny does have in spades. Um, but we were talking behind stage and he said something really great. And he said that windows are the eyes of your business. It's the thing that people notice first. Yeah, so whenever I joined the company that I work for now, so I, I manage the company, I'm the, the, the main buyer as well. Um, the first thing I noticed um, when I went for an interview was the windows were absolutely dire. They were terrible. They were actually using the windows as like storage space. I thought that's such a shame because this is a double fronted building over two floors in the city centre um, and we were the only um, interiors, um, wallpaper, cushions in the whole of the city centre so we were so lucky that way. Um, so I've seen that as an opportunity, right? This is the eyes of the business. Um, we have a lot of footfall, we're lucky with a lot of, we're on a main bus route. Um, we're near the hustle and bustle cafes, um, bars and restaurants. So. I then started to give them a bit of a makeover and give them a bit of attention. Um, this, the difference in sales as well that we noticed really, really quickly um, mm. by dressing the windows. And you know, one of my tips as well is it doesn't always have to be something that's going to sell. Um, most of the stuff I put in the window displays are really, really over the top. Um, but it's just about grabbing the, that passerby. It's about grabbing their attention, holding yeah. them, and it's about getting a reaction from them. Are they going to smile? Are they going to take a picture of it? Are they going to talk about it to their neighbour or their friend? So it's not always my best selling products go in the window. It's just something that's going to grab attention. Yeah. And I think that's so important. Um, so one of the trend agencies that we work with as a show is Colour Hive, and um, they seem to be really important. They say people make decisions based on colour within 10 seconds. That's, so it gives you an idea of actually how important it is to make an impact. That's how long it takes consumers to make decisions as to whether or not they like something. Now what we're looking at here, um, because we were chatting about this one, and I mean paint cans are not the most glamorous thing to work with if we're being honest. We see a lot of them in DIY. But within this window, they're very much the star of the show. But you've also put a lot of other things in that window. So can you, obviously, we've put the phrase, there, don't be afraid to mix in ranges. But 
How do you go around putting something like that together? So that was, that was me wanting to um, basically bring the, my own cushion collection into the store that I run as well. So I kind of thought they don't need to be on a chair in a sofa. Um, a lot of cars drive past, so you would maybe miss it because it's so low down. Um, so I decided to hang them at different angles, catch the light, um, and then you can see so much more. Whenever I dress a sofa, obviously I stick like 15 cushions <laughs> on a two-seater, but I can only fit so many on it, whereas that there's so many opportunities to hang 80 cushions if I really yeah. wanted. Uh, but yeah, I see what you mean about it's so it's so hard to make some items look glamorous. Yeah. But I think it's 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 how you position it and it's what you set them on. So you can see I've just used wooden boxes there, which I've painted really bright colours, and then those boring tins don't look as bad, popping against like a bright colour, like a neon orange or an acid green. But I've tried everything with window display. I've tried. I've tried neutrals, naturals, <laughs> and as, as much as I love colour and I'm very maximalist, um, I understand that's not for everybody and there's people that really love that neutral look. So I've tried to cater for that in window displays, but when you stand back and have a look, when you cross the road, it just washes out. So I've tried to do the whole neutral aesthetic in the window, but it yeah. just doesn't work yeah. in, in, with the lighting. Um, it's just too subtle, it doesn't grab attention. So um, as you can see, dark, stronger colours with the lighting um, is a bit more effective for grabbing their attention. And then I have some beautiful neutral colour stories within the store then. Yeah. But I also think you've got to bear in mind that the window is that place to make impact. So yeah. sometimes neutrals can work beautifully, but sometimes it is those giant pops of colour that make an impact. So this is one of um, Paul's windows that he's, um, we're going to talk through in a little bit. But I think what's interesting about this is just how strong and vibrant those colours are. And if you're seeing that from across the road, it definitely makes an impact. And hopefully there's a bit of an inspiration in there as well. But that, I can imagine, um, going back to what you said about expecting the unexpected. Yeah, so, you know, it's, there's four flamingos there. There's a forest <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. Um, but one of the things I was really pleased with was um, the cost effectiveness of um, two rolls of frog tape. Um, and what I done was pick the green frog tape, the blue frog tape, and a couple of pound of roll. And I was able to use that to highlight key parts of the window display from a distance that I wanted to focus on. Um, so it doesn't always have to cost the end of the earth to create such a, a stunning visual look. It could be as much as a two pound roll of frog tape or a tin of paint and paint yeah. some boxes to highlight some products as well. And I think when we were looking through some of Paul's imagery, when we were picking out things that hopefully spark some creativity with everybody here, um, there was so much to choose from. But one thing that kind of ran through them is there were often the ones that made impact is when there was something a little bit crazy in the middle of it. Um, <laughs> I stopped on the giraffe. <laughs> I think the lady I actually bought the giraffe from is here. So yeah, um, <laughs> and the four flamingos. Yeah, I think I bought it from you. Yeah, there we go. But I think what we were talking about, and we'll come to Christmas and a, a little bit further down, um, is actually people don't expect to see that. And that's sometimes what grabs their attention. They don't, but ultimately, I think Noblitz is known more as a wallpaper store traditionally. And sometimes by using these unexpected elements it helps change perception of what your store does yes when you see me crossing the road with these large <laughs> props and drafts coming out of vans it's like this is a wallpaper shop what's he doing but it's just about grabbing that customer's attention within the first few seconds and hopefully you capture them they mightn't have set out that day to buy wallpaper or cushions or paint but if they've stopped there's a good chance that they're going to come in and have a look yeah and, and then hopefully make the purchase yeah and i think we all appreciate that as retailers it's it's sometimes those things you don't expect to buy you want a customer who's coming in it's like the supermarket my husband says to me we'll go in for milk we'll come out with something completely random and I've probably forgot the milk and I think that's what you want your customers to do when they're in store it's like that's you right. want them to come in for one thing but then be sidetracked by everything else um, but I think one of the big questions so I'm not a professional visual merchandiser Paul you definitely are we've definitely got some experienced ladies in the audience as well um, but for many of us these windows look amazing and for me, if I was to even think about trying to put something like that together, and I think for many independent retailers it's the same, where on earth would you start? That's almost intimidating. So what we've done is we've had a little look through, um, and actually, Paul, where do you start? Yeah, a lot of people think I just gather everything that I have at home and in the store and then just bung it in, but there is a process to it. So I, um, I think the easiest way for me is to, um, 
to try and find something that I like, whether it's an object, it could be something I've seen in another shop, it could be something I have at home, or even something from the garden. Um, I pick stuff up from garden centers, gift shops, it could be just an item of clothing, and then use that. So it could be just a bit of color that I'm drawn to, like a color combo, it could be um, a piece of furniture. And then I basically create a, a mini mood board, nothing too technical. I don't start putting, um, you know, Photoshop things together. I just do a flat lay. I lay the, the items out, um, and then what I do is I gather it in over the space of a week or two, or how long it takes. I never start a window display until I have everything ready, because there's nothing worse than it half done. I never like anybody seeing it when it's not ready. Like there's somebody nodding here that has the same issues that I have. You don't <laughs> want anybody touching it. You don't want anybody practically breathing at it. But yeah, I gather everything up. Um, I use a, a mood board as a good reference. I screenshot lots of stuff. Social media is great. Pinterest is great. Um, and sometimes inspiration can hit you in the, you know, when you're least expecting it. Um, even here is great. You know, take lots of photographs here, see how the other retailers, uh, are, the, exhibit, the exhibitors are doing it, and, and then put your own spin on it. So the likes of that mood board, I knew I wanted those color combos. I wanted bits of floral. I wanted bits of tropical. Um, and then once I had everything ready, it was then, you know, it's all about the preparation. Um, there's no point starting into something like a big job like that until you've got all the elements together. Yeah. And then that's when the fun starts, really. Yeah, I think it, it, it is fun. Yeah. You know, when you start to play with it, it is fun. But I think one thing when we were talking through some of these mood boards is actually some of them morphed into other things when we would look in to try and find examples. And I think that's a key thing is once you've popped your mood board together, if something isn't working for you, it's fine to change your mind. Yeah, that's right. It's just about swapping it out with something else. And, and it could even be, there's been lots of times where I don't get it right straight away. And I don't know what it is that's wrong, but it's just about playing about with it until you're, you're happy with it. You know yourself, it's when you get into that space. Um, if it's not sitting right, it's not the end of the world. We can just change it about a bit. Yeah. And I think that comes down to, I think, having it all together before you start. I think that preparation is key. Yeah, and I always try to do it especially when it's not a busy time, because there's nothing worse than you're trying to dedicate your time to creating a beautiful like display. But obviously, the customer is so important as well. So because I am in a retail environment, I have to speak to people as well. They're, they're the main reason why I'm there. Um, but I always try to do it in an evening time. Mm. And another tip is always do it when you've had something to eat, because there's nothing worse than trying to do something like that when you're <laughs> hungry. You just get really ratty at, at that. But yeah, um, gather everything in. Make sure the prep work's done and then do it when in your least busiest time, I would say. Yeah, and I think when we were talking through, um, we were talking how that first mood board morphed into this one, which then was used as inspiration for actually these windows. So you can see, Paul, maybe you can talk about how some of those different bits come together. Yeah, so I, um, I had looked at different wall coverings, pattern. I knew I wanted something, um, the window display that I had fitted previously to that was quite toned down. So I wanted something a bit louder um, because every time I change the window um, seasonally, I always change it maybe every two to three months. Um, every time I change it, I want it to look completely different than the one before because a lot of repeat people walking past, um, repeat customers, uh, people on their way to work every day, people that live in the area. So you want it to look dramatically different and not just a subtle change. So because the previous window was a bit more believe it or not, a bit more neutral than that. Um, <laughs> I wanted it to be really loud, so I'd started with some of the patterns um, to which I then uh, matched the paint colors to paint the blocks, to highlight some of the cushions and some of the other accessories. Uh, and then the giraffe, everything, basically, that was the biggest item, that was the biggest prop that I had. So that was obviously going to sit in the center of the window, and then everything was built around that. The smaller yeah. items then fit in around that. I think what's interesting when we look through these photos, and hopefully you guys will see it too, is you can see a lot of these props in different images. So you'll see the blocks. And I think that's one of the key things that we were talking about, is actually it's the smaller things that make a difference. Reuse the things that you have. And as we were talking about, frog tape. Yeah, so like something as simple as frog tape but a couple of pound of roll. As you can see, that's the blue one. So it's just about creating um, focal points. So if you wanted to highlight something in the window, if you have a big window space, um, you could highlight it by framing certain areas and suspending um, 
the, the product behind it. Or even if you've got like a slightly more boring window, you know, you can use it to frame as well. So it's great when the light hits it. Um, and things like those wooden blocks, that's just simple MDF blocks that I had um, a carpenter make up really quickly. And they've been painted like a thousand times. They're just getting bigger with the amount of layers of paint on them, but it's such an you easy way. Them. Yeah, it's just <laughs> such an easy way to showcase um, products and by painting them different colors and uh, just drawing the, the eye to that. Yeah. So again, just to not go through all of the mood boards, but to show you how some of these different mood boards have come together, maybe you can talk these through. So see, so this one is a huge amount of texture in here. Um, yeah, so a lot of these, um, a lot of these are just before I would start like a, a visual merchandising um, overload in the store because once you start these things, you think it's going to be a little small move, and then before you know it, you've moved half the store, and there's customers coming in, and there's tripping hazards, and it's a mess. So I find even if it's not a window display, and you're thinking of changing an area within the shop. Um, it's, it's quite good just to lay one item of everything out in a, in a space, you know, not in the main store um, and plan it out. I think that's what it's about. It's about the planning yeah. and try not to create as much mess as that you normally would. That's, it's all about trying to... <laughs> mess not, after hours? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think what's really great is obviously it's all about creating those aspirational vignettes for people. Um, and those two mood boards, as we were talking, actually both went into this amazing scene here. Um, so talk to me a little bit about everything. We've got some pampas grass, we've got some feathers, we've got some velvet textures. Yeah, you have a bit of everything going on there. <laughs> so that, as those mood boards shown, um, I looked at that simply for color. I knew what color I wanted for the space, but I didn't know what pattern I wanted or any of the accessories. Um, with the style that I have, I kind of nearly want everything in the room anyway. More is more in, in my eyes, but um, I, I use those mood boards as a good reference. So I definitely wanted rusts, coppers, burnt orange, but I wanted the kind of clash against teals and dark, dark, rich blues. Um, so I used that as a, a guide. Yeah. And then um, every time I went to um, collect another item or make a purchase, I was just referencing back to that. Does it fit in with what I'm looking at? Yeah. Um, and then it, it magically worked. Yeah, and I think what I'm taking away, certainly from this next one, is that you're incredibly brave with colour. You're quite confident with it. What tips would you, how would you, when you're talking to one of your kind of retail <coughs> customers or somebody in store, where would you tell them to start? If they want to start with a, a pop of colour, but they want to get to that maximalist kind of look. Yeah, because I, people say you're, you're brave when it comes to colour. I'm, I'm very comfortable with colour. Whenever I then start working with neutral and natural and grey, I then become the opposite, where I become quite nervous. So I find it more difficult to work with, with neutrals. Um, and I don't find it easy. I find it easier just to throw every colour that I like into a scheme. Uh, when it comes to neutral, I get more nervous. But if somebody wants to dip their toe into that world of colour and add a bit of colour in, I think the perfect way of doing it, if you, if you don't want to commit to colour on all the walls, um, to bring it into the soft furnishings, bring it into cushions, rugs, even lampshades without having to change the whole lamp. Um, even colour blocking as well, so taping off areas of the room, um, bringing in a paint colour, uh, and if you don't like it, nobody's got hurt, we can paint it back to cream or beige or a neutral. Um, so definitely experiment maybe with paint colours, um, maybe before painting a, or before wallpapering a wall like you see in this image, in a in a like a floral design. Do you like the depths of the the blue or the rust? Paint the wall that colour first maybe, yeah. and see if you can live with that before introducing lots of pattern and colour, because yeah. it can be quite overwhelming to a lot of people. I think as well as that, paint is the easiest way to add a splash of colour without committing to a huge renovation project. Yeah, most people can paint themselves. I've seen some <laughs> like, quite bad jobs done of it in the cutting in and whatnot. But yeah, paint is a really quick fix. You can change the space quite a bit with a lick of paint. You know, it can change the, you know, how the room feels and, and, and how it looks. So definitely, you know, what have you got to lose? And it's so cheap as well to, to change that. If you don't like it, you can repaint it. Key lesson. <laughs> so, and I think obviously we've just seen some really bright colors. But actually, these neutrals are beautiful as well. And I would call these neutrals, I think these, this type of colour palette of these blushes and the greens and the pink, incredibly commercial. Yeah, I would say that's probably as neutral as I normally go. <laughs> and there's like, there's about eight colours in there. So yeah, oh. um, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't normally class that as, 
as neutral, but that, as, <laughs> as neutral as I am willing to go. Um, as you see, um, florals, um, a lot of customers will come in, they'll ask, oh, I want, uh, I want, I want something different, and I'll ask what they have. They'll say, oh, it's very neutral, I want a, I want a bit of colour. And I'm always anxious of scaring them with my own taste. Um, so some of the florals um, are a perfect way of um, starting with your pattern and then pulling the planes from that in your, maybe your curtains or the other wall color with the paint. Um, yeah. So it's about trying to find that one item again, a bit like the window display, find that one item that you wanna focus on and what you like and then build the scheme around it. Yeah, again, I think it starts out with that one piece that you love. Yeah. And I think as people walk around Spring Fair, you're building ranges that way. You might have something dead set in your mind that you want to work with, but actually one great piece can sidetrack that. <laughs> so moving on. Now, obviously Christmas, we're in early February. Christmas isn't something that most consumers would be thinking about right now, but I think everybody in this room probably is. Um, <laughs> it's fair to say Paul loves Christmas. Yeah, it's like it should be all year round. I know people hate the thought of that, but yeah, it's it's the one time of year where I can go even more over the top and then not get judged for it. So it's like, yeah, it's um, the perfect time in retail as well for um, display. Um, we were talking about how actually Christmas gives you almost permission to do something bold. Yeah, I think I think we all see the displays and we want to create them at home. Um, and it, it can be really expensive to create that look of a window display at home. You know, people often buy a couple of items and get it into their own space and expect it to look the same as it does in the window. And of course, unless you buy every single <laughs> item in that window display, it's not kind of going to look like that. But yeah, it kind of gives you permission that one time a year to go a bit more way out. You know, it's the one time a year where most people will bring things from the loft, things from the shed, and they'll buy lots of over the top sparkly accessories and, um, bring things into their home that they normally wouldn't yeah. so yeah and I think we were talking about the giant Christmas tree so how tall was this Christmas tree I think that one was um, <laughs> 17 feet and the ceiling was only 16 so I had to break the top of it um, so yeah that was the, the tallest one that I'd done this year um, so yeah that was walking into the store um, we normally focus on the windows um, because that's where most customers um, are walking past but this was the first year that we done like a big tree as you entered the store. Um, and again, a talking point, and we were able to use that as a, an area to merchandise around. So the whole way around the bottom of the tree, I was able to use those blocks once again and crates and boxes and baskets. And some of the items that were actually taken off the shelves and put into those crates, sold. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, again, it's all about putting things front and center in a way that people notice. Once shelves are packed, not everyone's gonna see everything on that shelf. And sometimes it's about how you edit. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I think sometimes the eye can only take in so much at one time. So you can walk into stores and just see shelves and shelves and rows and it can be, everything can be fronted and everything, the label can all be sitting really nice. But do you lose concentration after a while? When I first joined that store, it, there was um, from the front door to the back, I think there was um, 30 aisles, um, which I've broke up into pods and um, little carousels. So it's about more creating a customer journey. It's about them being able to walk around and not go up and down aisles like you would in your supermarket. Because I think when you're, when you're shopping, for a particular item like wallpaper or fabric or cushions and it's just in lines you kind of forget how many aisles you've walked up and down and you're just focusing on getting into the next one without actually yeah. living in that moment and seeing that one product in front of you yeah i think walking up and down the aisles will definitely sympathize <laughs> um but i think also one thing that i've seen from some of the looks and some of the rooms that you've created is that actually a lot of it is very bold um, yeah. Now, out of interest, because not many people know this, how many Christmas trees do you think you decorated this year? I knew it was, it was over 40, <laughs> but it was like under 50. Um, <laughs> but this year I really toned it down in my own house. I, because I was so busy, <laughs> I, I only put a couple of Christmas trees up. <laughs> like, la like last year, I think I had seven in the lounge. I'd done away with the sofa to, to get an extra two trees in. But I, um, I caught myself on this year and thought, no, just a couple we'll that I'll do, yeah. Tree. So, but yeah, I've done over 40 trees and that, that included for um, other retailers, um, myself, um, the store that I manage, um, even bars, restaurants um, had asked me to decorate their windows um, for Christmas. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's the perfect time to kind of, if you want to create a real bold, dramatic Christmas display that, you know, a display, Christmas is the perfect time. Yeah. 
And I think when we were, the reason that we're showing this particular picture is I asked Paul what was his favorite tree and that was the favorite tree. Yeah. What, what did you like about doing that one? Was it the color? I think it was just because I kind of threw the rule book out the window. Um, I fa it is beautiful when I see, um, you know, the traditional trees and I see um, a minimum of, or a maximum of like two colors. That's a real tight color palette. I find that really beautiful. And I, I do do that for a lot of clients. But I think that this one was kind of really chaotic and it was about throwing that rule book out the window. It was about throwing as many colors as I could get onto it and as much sparkle, as much texture. There was feathers, there was pompous, there was everything. Um, and I think with that, it's quite more is more. So if I had to strip that and took half of that off, it probably wouldn't have looked as effective. Yeah. And I think that's part of the key, is that if you're going to be bold and you're going to do something extravagant, you don't hold back. Yeah, I think you have to apply yourself and then just go for it. Yeah. Um, if you're wanting to be bold, you just have to kind of take that risk and do it. Yeah. So, yeah. And this, um, going back to one of your store windows, because this one, I think, was this Christmas? Yeah, that was this Christmas. So um, what I tried to do was create a wonderland in one of the, the spaces, and then in the second space, create something a bit more livable, um, like a room set. So um, we used the, the bed as the focus point. Um, behind the bed, you know, this is only a window display, so I didn't want to go to a lot of cost, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of hassle with having to get carpenters and woodwork. So I just used a, a wallpaper that has like a 3D effect to it, like a wood panel. Um, created that like traditional look at the back and then just layered up the bed. So I was able to show off maybe 10, 12 cushions on the bed, three different throws um, and create a real cozy feeling uh, and then dress the tree as well. So yeah, that was a slightly more traditional <laughs> take. Um, good luck getting into that bed as well. <laughs> the cushions I don't it. know. There's not as many cushions as I've seen in other ones. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the things that we took away with this is do be smart with what you have. It doesn't cost a lot of money to do a window like this. It just takes time and imagination and a bit of inspiration. And I think one thing and the reason that we picked this is actually the impact of the wallpaper in the background. Super effective. And it's not something that, that I see actually in a, lot of, in a lot of windows, but it's a really easy way to update. Um, and again, this is another Christmas look. We won't take you through all of them, but going back to the color palettes. Yeah, so it's not your traditional color palette. You know, and when I walked around the, the, the last fair I came to, I seen a lot of blush pink. Um, and a lot of people had invested into the blush, the, a lot of blush homeware. So it was about adding other colors in with it and trying to elevate it and try and make it look a bit different. So if at that particular scheme, um, the client had said about popping like uh, mulberry colors in there and greens, bits of blue. So yeah, it's quite mix and match, but it works in its own little magical way. But <laughs> Well, no, but I think one of the big trends that we're seeing coming through for this Christmas is a boldness of color. It's like consumers like that Nordic Scandi, but actually this year we're gonna see a lot more color in terms of royal blues, in terms of really strong reds. And hopefully you'll see that in some of, of the stands that are here. Um, but yeah, don't forget about the other holidays. You say you do, um, you update your windows every few months? So the, the longest I kind of leave it is every probably three months, depending on how busy I am and how busy the store is. The last thing I want to do is start creating mess and dedicating two, three days out of my diary to window display when the customers are really important. But yeah, I kind of decorate seasonally. So um, if I can decorate the windows four or five times a year, um, yeah. Yeah, I try my best to do that. And one of the reasons we thought we'd show this, so this is um, one of the Easter palettes that Paul's working with, um, to show you hopefully something that maybe you could take away into your stores. Easter's not that far away, it's probably already planned. Um, but what we liked about this was it was the use of those colors. Yeah, so that, that basically started with that little uh, flat lay mood board. Um, that was a wallpaper that we had had in the store for a couple of years. Um, looked at that, thought, oh, there's, there's rabbits on that, there's carrots on that, that'll be perfect to make a, a scheme for Easter time. So that was the starting point. Um, and then I took the colors from that. And um, even things like, you know, I would be in garden centers. Um, I don't sell any garden, um, you know, accessories or any garden furniture, but things like the grass rabbits and stuff, um, they're all from like garden centers. Um, and it's about bringing them inside and using things that you wouldn't normally use in that space indoors. Um, and, and just mix in the color as well. Yeah. And I think that's a grass tree as well. 
grass that's tree? a grass tree as well yeah that again that was from a garden center and i've decorated that for easter i've decorated it for halloween for christmas um i've even brought branches in from the garden and spray painted in different colors and and hung different um ornaments from you know for, for easter as well as christmas so yeah. it's about thinking outside of the box and it could be stuff that you already have it could be in front of you it's just how you use it in a different way and have fun yeah, because I, you know, I really enjoy retail. I enjoy visual merchandising, and I don't see it as a, a job. I, I actually, I find it quite fun whenever I've got everything in place and I'm stuck in. It's like the red mist comes down and I don't see anything else around me or hear anything apart from what I'm doing at that, at that point. Yeah, oh, sorry, I forgot we had a close-up picture of the grass tree. Mm. I think I just really love that as a really creative idea. There's something that's really impactful and can be reused and reused and reused. And I think when we look through the pictures, you can see that, you can see the cubes, you can see the paint, you can see the props that are used and just a little twist. So it doesn't have to be so expensive, but also having fun with some of the other holidays too. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think um, like Christmas time, um, I know we're going back to Christmas, but mentioning the people that want to dip their toe into a bit of colour or experiment with colour, um, the holidays are the perfect time, where there's Halloween, Christmas, Easter, to, to experiment with colour, because you're going to have that decor in the house for maybe a month, two months. Um, and so you can play about with those reds, greens, oranges. Uh, and then if you don't like it, it can be packed away seasonally with the rest of the, the decor. Yeah. And um, just to show, obviously, we've seen a lot of bold colours, so I was quite surprised to see this one in here when we were looking through the imagery. Um, but Paul, because we were trying to find images that went to it, and he um, admitted this was something he's working on. So <laughs> I, I admit that you know, that's, that's, that's quite calm for me, so I'm struggling with that. Um, I've put that palette together, um, and I kind of regret that, and now I won't let it beat, I won't let it beat me. I will do it. Um, I'm just trying to um, put it together in a, a, in a bolder way, but it, it just still keeps looking very neutral and natural, yeah. but maybe that's okay. Um, but this is work in progress, so um, I've put that mood board together, and I'm just trying to find all the right elements. Yeah. And again, I won't start that until I have everything. And I think going back to that, I think it's about staying with what you feel comfortable in. Part of the reason that I included this is that these are absolutely bang on trend colours right now. And this is such a commercial colour palette. We're seeing a lot of these blushes and these golds. And, and one of the things that I look for is if I see a huge amount of gold on the catwalk and in the fashion side, we know that's coming through interiors. And even, um, even the glass, um, there's a, a wonderful um, Czech designer called Anna von Lipa who does beautiful glass and we're just seeing a lot of it coming through so we just wanted to add this in as, as a little bit of of inspiration um so that's it from us does anybody have any questions do we have any brave people in the audience no no <laughs> that's okay <laughs> that's okay well thank you we hope hopefully thank you paul for joining us um, and I hope that you found some of the imagery and some ideas and a few little nuggets that you can take away. I know sometimes people are a little bit shy, but um, we will be around for a few minutes after the session if any of you do have any questions. But um, thank you so much for staying with us today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Suzanne and Paul.